And broadly speaking, I'd say on non-nutritive sweeteners, so sweeteners without calories, they're the ones that I think definitely have negative metabolic impacts, um, things like aspartame and Diet Coke. People try to defend it. It's actually really funny I, watching social media spaces. You see these people, it's like, oh, Diet Coke isn't bad for you. Yeah, Lane Norton. Yeah. I'd say, like, <laughs> dude. Didn't you have an exchange with him? We've had a few. Well, this was actually about fructose because he recently retweeted. I just did that. break. You know how I did the intracellular breakdown that I just yes. talked about? Yeah. So, like, all right, you know, ketohexokinase, you know, depletes, uh, ATP, AMP builds up, causes, you know, blah, 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 blah. Econotase. A lot of enzyme names. I caveated it as this is an interest piece explaining a biological mechanism. He retweets it with something like, oh, but saturated fat increases liver fat by 70% more than fructose. Ouch. It was trying to like dunk on me. Mm -hmm. The issue is he didn't look at table one of the paper he quoted, the paper he linked to try to dunk on me, <laughs> where it actually showed that the fructose increased ectopic fat in the form of circulating triglycerides by 70%. So yeah, there wasn't fat in the liver because it was being dumped into the freaking bloodstream, dude. So look at figure one before you try to dunk on me. Wow. So I did a response video. And then actually he was very polite. He replied to the email that he hadn't replied to for a month. And uh, oh, we had nice. a nice exchange. I honestly, here's the thing. Um, I know I was just kind of poking a lane. I, the people I think are very, some people are deliberate about their social media style. Yes. He is clearly very, his his persona on Twitter is very hot-headed, and it works for his brand. I like I, what, I like that he, the fact that he points out a lot of the charlatans. Yeah, I do. Space. So I actually have no big issue with Lane. I think we definitely come from things from different angles. I've heard behind the scenes that he's a pretty thoughtful guy, um, and I, I actually think he is pretty smart. And I think we would actually, in, in real life, be pretty good friends. We've had good email correspondences. So you brought up, I wasn't going to bring up Lane. You brought up Lane. But that was just an example of, look, there's more here to the story. I'm not saying fructose is, you know, in. I'm not saying foods that contain fructose are terrible. Don't not eat blueberries because I'm talking about this. But I am saying it has unique metabolic properties. And it's something that all things being equal, I think most people should reduce. And there are data that I think are just interesting. So we actually mentioned earlier, I think at the beginning of the podcast, like the whole Diet Coke and anxious sperm. Think about that experiment for a minute. In that study, what they did is they gave mice um, doses of aspartame, the sweetener in Diet Coke, that were equivalent to 7 to 15% of FDA-regulated safe levels. So low doses, right. equivalent to 2 to 4 Diet Cokes. That was the dose equivalent. We're not loading these mice up. 2 to 4 Diet Coke dose equivalents. They tested them for anxiety phenotype. You can do like an open um, open field test. And they were like anxious mice. Not only that, then you cross the mice and look at their offspring. And their offspring, despite not being exposed, were themselves anxious. And even the grand offspring at the four Diet Coke dose were more anxious. So it could be inherited. Now, pause. What claim am I making? I'm not claiming that you can't use Diet Coke for weight loss. And I'm not providing human data that it's you know, affecting mental health that can be, you know, transgeneration, transgenerationally inherited. But you have to think about what data we can acquire. So if somebody says on Twitter, yeah, but these aren't human data, so I don't care. I'm like, yeah, but we're never going to have these data in human. You can't do this experiment in human. So all I can provide you is these animal data and then ask you the question, based on this, are you worth, is it worth risking your kid's mental health and anxiety mm -hmm to have a Diet Coke. Do you care about it that much? Mm. For me, I'm like, dude, I'll just have a water. I don't need it. If right. people really need it, I mean, you're an adult, make your own decisions. I'm not saying you can't have Diet Coke. What I'm saying is this isn't the equivalent of water. So are there negative health effects? I definitely think so. Is it going to cause cancer? Like, no, you're not going to wake up with a glioblastoma. Mm -hmm. So maybe some of the fear mongering is overblown, mm -hmm. but I also don't think people should just be defending it for the sake of defending it. Like, Encourage people to just have water. We don't need this. Why do you think you need it? And also, you know, be clear about your comparator. Like, mm -hmm. is it worse than a Coke? Probably not. But why are you choosing that as a comparator? Right. Right.